a person. He doesn't feel any sort of emotion. It is a very interesting and enlightening book. Hello fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today I have this very enlightening book known as The Stranger by Albert Camus. Camus, I, I don't know. It's French, it's, um, it is French, it's a translated version in English, which is what I read. It is a really interesting book, so let's just get right on to it. So basically, he is, um, the main character is mentally ill, he just doesn't feel anything. So when the night his mother dies, he doesn't cry, he doesn't care, he just goes there, and, st and since he knows that it is a custom to sit vegan, he just drinks coffee, and he just doesn't care. And then the next day he goes out with his girlfriend and watches a funny movie and swims at the beach and stuff. And he just doesn't care. And when his girlfriend asks if he loves her, he just doesn't care. He said, you can do whatever you want. And he doesn't know what love feels like. He doesn't know what remorse is. Now this sounds like, wow, that's just bad or that's what you might think. But it's like, this book just makes you understand what it feels like because in his, in his point of view, it's natural. It's natural as we're saying. For example, it's natural for you to grieve after your um, someone close to you dies or passes away. That's natural for you, but it's not natural for people like him. And that's why this book is a great book, because we won't think, the first thing we'll think when a person for example, doesn't grieve for his parents, who just doesn't care about what's going on in the world. You will just say he's a bad person. That's all you would say. You wouldn't go on further and see what kind of person he is and how his mind is structured. Now, in the modern world, we call them psychopaths, sociopaths, etc., etc. But as my parents say, at the time when this book was published, I'm just relaying this from my dad, it literally would have been controversial because no one knew about psychopath or sociopaths. There isn't much to say about this book because the plot itself is just, there's a guy, he isn't sad at all, he just doesn't care, he just lives his life because he has to live. And then he has a friend and that friend wants to get rid of someone and he just goes up to that person, shoots him, and just be done with it. That, that's it, and then when he's captured, he keeps forgetting he's in jail and he killed a man because he just doesn't care. That's it, that's the story. And then it's about him not caring if he dies, he's just waiting for himself to die. That's pretty much it. The only thing that he understands is logic. Cold logic. And when people talk about religion and of God and of repenting, he just doesn't care, he doesn't believe that. He, that doesn't interest him. What, why should he care? And that's what that he thinks is natural for himself because that's how his mind is structured. He doesn't understand what other people are saying when they're saying about God and all that stuff. And that's, I think, more reasons why this book is such a good book. As I've just mentioned, it makes you think, like, what is this person thinking? What is his point of view? And yeah, it, it just makes me like know what he's thinking about, why, why we can't possibly understand sociopath or psychopath without being one. I mean, you you might say he's totally insane. He's he has a his brain is wired wrong. You might say that, but you wouldn't completely understand because for him, you're the one with the bat with the messed up brain, and he's the one that's natural. It makes you. Books are supposed to put you in the different pe per person's boots, and that's what The Stranger does to you. So that's why I think it is such a great book. And one thing is that, I don't know how, but it makes me want to read on, because books like these, they just make me uncomfortable, but no, it's just, it just pulls me in and rips through it. I don't know how this person managed to write this in a way that, number one, we would hate the character and we would not understand why he would do these things because we're not mentally ill. First, that's the first point. The second point that is pretty much controversial and no one else thought about this, and I'm fairly sure he wasn't mentally ill, so like writing like this, writing in such a realistic way that would touch someone that is just so realistic, 
And the third point is that he made the character so likable to us that we wouldn't hate him. He's an anti-hero. We don't hate him. We don't hate the main character. We don't understand what he's doing for sure. But it's like we start to understand even 0.0001% what we call mental illness is. And that is why I think you should read the book if you're old enough, because it does include some, you know, parts about women and men and stuff. So I would go for above, definitely above my age. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's a pretty great book. And like always, your book Quester are in the book Quester. So yeah, that's all, all pretty much I have to say. It's a thin book. It just makes you think, like, what do people think? What if you're, you think you're normal, but what if you're not? You don't, you can't tell. No one can. Think about that before you go and play some video games or read a book, whatever.